experience the intercession of her, through whom we were found worthy to receive the offer of life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, her Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. October 13th, 1972, the chartered airplane was flying a Uruguayan rugby team, among other passengers, from Montevideo, Uruguay to Santiago, Chile. Forty-five passengers were on board. As a result of a navigational error and bad weather, the plane crashed into deep snow and broke into several pieces. Incredibly, 28 young men survived. Some of them had on school jackets. Others were dressed only in shirt sleeves. None were dressed for the sub-zero weather. A few suitcases with extra clothing were found and used. As night closed in, the 28 survivors huddled together in the now wingless fuselage of the plane. On the eighth day, search parties from Chile, Argentina, and Uruguay abandoned their efforts to locate the crashed plane. This news reached the survivors through a small transistor radio that had survived the crash. The young men now realized that if they were to survive, it would have to be on their own. In the next few weeks, 12 more passengers died eight of them in a sudden avalanche, which placed the number of survivors at 16. At this point, the 16 remaining young men made an important decision. They decided to hold nightly prayer services in the shallow of the plain. Around 9 o'clock, when the moon dropped below the mountain, they would stop all talking and one of the survivors would begin the rosary. The nightly prayer sessions became a tremendous source of strength for them. Some boys who weren't particularly religious began to experience a remarkable awareness of God's presence during those prayer sessions. For example, there was a boy named Arturo. He was a rather sullen, bitter, disillusioned, person. Even his own family found him withdrawn and hard to communicate with. One night Arturo surprised everyone by asking to lead the prayers. As he prayed, he spoke with such deep feeling that the others were struck with a new affection for him. After the prayer ended, everyone was silent. Only Arturo could be heard weeping softly. Why are you crying, someone asked. Because I feel so close to God, Arturo replied. Days inched to weeks, and finally in the eighth week, the weather began to break. Two of the strongest men agreed to try to descend the mountain for help. The going was extremely difficult. They were tied together by a nylon cord one bad slip and both would go tumbling down the mountain. One of them began a continuous dialogue with God. He had seen the movie Fiddler on the Roof and remembered that Tevye prayed that way. God, he said, you can make it tough, but please don't make it impossible. 
Nine days later, the two men made it down. Within hours, army helicopters flew to the top of the mountain to rescue the remaining 14. Those of you who remember this story through the news or reading a book about it, or seeing it in uh, one of the movies made about it, remember that cannibalism is how anyone survived this ordeal. But it isn't that aspect I want to remember today. The story of these 16 young men is an appropriate one for today's feast because the 16 survivors gave credit to Mary for helping them survive those 72 days. By actual count, they had repeated, repeated the phrase, Holy Mary, Mother of God, over 50,000 times on that mountain. During those 72 days on the mountain, the, the 16 men experienced that Mary was not only the Mother of God, but also their mother. The birth of Jesus was a spiritual rebirth for the human race. And so, in a true sense, Mary is the spiritual mother of the human race. And so, uh, Paul expresses this great mystery in his, uh, this way in today's second reading when, when he says, When the right time finally came, God sent his own son. He came as the son of a human mother and lived under the Jewish law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might become God's sons. Indeed, when Mary gave birth to Jesus, she gave birth to a, a, a new human race as well. And so Mary is not only the mother of God, but our own mother as well. Because Mary is our mother, she is a powerful advocate for us in heaven. To ignore Mary's motherly concern for us is to ignore God's gift of her motherhood to us. And that leads into the new year. A new year is a time of new hope, of new life, of a chance to begin again. Last year is passing away and will be over. This year is beginning and lies ahead of us. It is God's gift to us. What we do with it is our response to that gift. When we think of it, it is appropriate that we should celebrate the Feast of Mary, the Mother of God, on the first day of the new year, since it reminds us that because of Mary's motherhood, you and I have been given new life. We have been given new hope. We have been given a chance to start over again. So if we're looking for a New Year's resolution, we couldn't do better than follow the example of the 16 young men on the mountain. We too might make the decision they made. We too might decide that starting today, we will make prayer an important part of our life in the days ahead. If prayer is already a part of our life, we might resolve to try to make it an even richer experience. And one way to do this is to do what the 16 young men did on the mountain. It is to seek Mary's help in our prayers. If we do this, we can be confident that we will experience her help just as they did. So, let's end this reflection on the feast of Mary, Mother of God, the way the 16 boys ended their prayer each night in the mountain by reciting the Salve Regina. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, for banished children of thee. To thee do we set up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn them to the gracious path. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, 
Let us stand. the children of God, we cry out, Abba, Father, and pray for the needs of the world.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual bread. Great brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the only God. May the Lord accept your sacrifice and your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our redeeming the cause of his holy church. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us to find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominion to adore, powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together in exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble petition as we invite. Mm -hmm. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to stand in the of the
Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin ever Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank Paul Bergouli, the Kirst family, Pat and Jim Somer, Joyce Robinson and John Prohaska for taking over the assignments that were given during the Christmas holidays. Their help is greatly appreciated. Religious education classes and the DVD presentation of Catholicism will resume next Sunday, the Epiphany of the Lord. They will take place at 11 a.m. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lord, yes, sir. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go forth.